and to the wrath of Allah. And to depart, O evil and malicious soul, who lived in an evil and malicious body. We ask Allah's protection from that. Amen. Then as the angel of death is about to take the soul out of the believer, he likewise repeats some words and he says to come out to the wrath of Allah and to depart in the condemned state that you used to live in as well. And again, you see here that you reap what you sow. You live a life of disobedience. You live a life of transgression. And you will be greeted with the wrath of Allah when the angel of death comes to collect your soul. So a soul that is given such a greeting leaves with, a, with immense and extreme fear. And the angel of death has to pull it out as described by Allah in Surah Al-Nazi'at. Imagine attempting to pull out a branch with thorns from a swab of cotton. What's going to happen to the cotton? It's going to be ripped to shreds. When the soul is being greeted with the wrath of Allah, it doesn't want to depart. And it will be extracted painfully. And this is how the disbelieving soul begins its journey. Now that the angel of death has taken out the soul of the, believe, of the disbeliever, he gives it to the angels that came to carry it. And it, within less than of a blink of an eye, they engulf it and they wrap it with the garments from Jahannam. And the foul stench associated with it. And they begin to take it up to the heavens. And as they raise it up to the heavens, they pass by other angels on the way. And each angel that they pass begins to curse the soul. Each angel begins to curse the soul. And they call it the soul of so-and-so, the son of so-and-so. And they call it by the worst names that this individual used to be called by during his life or her life. And when the soul reaches the heavens, it is denied admittance. And it is returned back down to the grave with a promise of the torment to come, of the punishment to come. And as the soul returns to the body in the grave, it is squeezed and it is congested. And it continues to be squeezed and congested as a punishment for the deeds that it has performed in this life. And this is the, ca the case of the disbelieving soul. We ask Allah's protection from that. Amen. Once the soul is in the grave, everybody undergoes one of the greatest trials that we will ever face. And that is the trial of the angels of the questioning. Munkar and Nakir. These two angels, they come to the soul and they ask it three questions. Three questions that, Wallahi, when you hear them, you think, this is going to be a walk in the park. But it's a completely different story on that day. They come to the soul and they ask it these three questions. And Wallahi, brothers and sisters, we should spend our entire life preparing to answer them correctly. We all prepare. When it comes to exams in school, we stay up at nights, all nighters. Everybody's accustomed to that. Just get the coffee, the espresso, and start taking shots as you study. When it comes to work reviews at the end of the year, we start working extra hard, overtime, so that we can get that bonus. So we need to think about our ultimate goal, Jannah. And think about how much effort we need to expend to prepare ourselves for answering these three questions. The three questions are, who is your Lord? And what was your religion? And who was the prophet that was sent amongst you? Pretty simple, right? Allah describes in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim, that Allah will grant firmness and steadiness to the believers with a statement of firmness of La ilaha illallah. This is why the Prophet وسلم, he advised us and encouraged us that for those who are nearing death to say the kalima. 
to say La ilaha illallah. That as you near that final abode, that, that second station in your journey, to end your life on La ilaha illallah. So that when you are placed in the grave, you are prepared for these questions. So the believer is granted firmness by Allah and he is able to answer these questions with ease. As for the disbeliever, he will stutter and he will stumble and he will be unable to answer. And after every question is asked and he's unable to answer, he will be beaten and he will be hit by the angels. And after these questions are asked, the person will know where their ultimate destination will be. The person will know whether they will enter heaven or will, whether they will enter hell. And if the soul was a believing one, a door to the fire is opened. If the soul was a believing one, a door to the fire will be open. And the soul is shown its place in the fire had it disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what would have happened if you were a disbeliever. But of course, this was a believing soul. And that door is shut and locked. And another door onto the garden is open. And they're shown their place in paradise. And this door will remain open until the day of resurrection. And some of the sweetness and the fragrance of the garden will reach them. And their grave will be made spacious as far as the eye can see. But if the soul was a disbelieving one, then a door to the garden will be open for the unbeliever. And they are told to look at the place that they would have had had they obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And that door will be shut and locked. And another door will be opened. Another door will be opened and they are told to look at their place in the fire. And this door will remain open and a blast of hot air will come from it and it will continue to reach them until the day of resurrection. And the earth will press onto them. The earth will squeeze them and it will crush them to the point that their ribs will, crush up, will, will, will split apart. We ask Allah's protection from that. Amen. And this is the meat of the story. This is... This is what every person will have to endure, believer and disbeliever alike in the grave. From amongst the believers, and we ask Allah to make us from them, Amen. there are those who are disobedient to Allah in this life. We all make mistakes. And we ask Allah to forgive us those mistakes in this life. Wallahi, since we're at this subject, I want to take a little tangent and speak about the trials and the tribulations that we face in life. A lot of times, we undergo difficulties. We lose a job. We get injured. We fall severely ill. We lose a loved one. And we find ourselves asking, why me? A lot of people do that. Why me? And what we need to realize is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests the believer. As he says in Surah Al-Ankabut, the first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do they think that they will be left to say we believe and they will not be tested? So believers will be tested in this life. And part of the benefit of these tests is that if we are patient, these difficulties, these trials, the harm that befalls us is actually an expiation of sins and an elevation of rank on the Day of Judgment for those who are patient. And Wallahi, when we get to the grave, we will wish that every deed that we transgress the bounds of Allah with in this life, we would have been punished for it in this life, so that we would avoid the punishment and the torment of the grave. So from amongst the believers, there are those who have been disobedient to Allah. And there's about seven or eight punishments which will take place in the grave as a result of that disobedience.
The punishments, they vary in accordance to the sins that are committed. And there are narrations recorded in both Sahih Bukhari and Muslim about the torments in Al-Barzakh.